welcome to WinDev, the series where I cover the development of Microsoft Windows one video at a time. Today's episode is going to be covering Windows 1.0. If you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you may have seen my video upgrading through four builds of Windows 1.0 already, though that video wasn't as detailed and is pretty out of date. First, let's talk about how Windows 1.0 actually came to be. In 1981, Microsoft's Apps Division started work on a user interface for all the productivity applications they had under their umbrella at the time, called Mush, or Microsoft User Shell, later renamed to Interface Manager. I briefly touched on Interface Manager in a YouTube short I made a few months ago, although some of the information is inaccurate due to new information being provided shortly after. This interface was entirely text-based, having a session control bar at the bottom of the screen containing functions and commands. Around this time, a developer was working on an ISO graphics editor called GKS, or Graphical Kernel System, which Microsoft wanted to incorporate into one of their products. This started work in early 1982, being called GDI, or Graphics Device Interface. Later that year, the Interface Manager and GDI teams would essentially merge into one, making the Microsoft Window Manager team responsible for making mockups and demos for what they eventually wanted to do with the product. The product was renamed Windows later the next year, with it ultimately being announced on the 10th of November, 1983. Microsoft would later show off an early build at Comdex just two weeks later, and at the time, it seemed promising. Builds at this time featured tiled windows, which were chosen because of usability studies by Xerox's Palo Alto Research Center, or PARC. The release date set at the time was April 1984, which as we know, they never made it to. It's at this point that we get to the fifth release sent out to developers, named Development Release 5, obviously, which is the earliest build of Windows 1.0 that has leaked to the public so far. It was compiled on the 31st of October, 1984. The setup of this build is rather basic, being nothing more than a batch script that copies files over to the correct installation folders. The setup does expect a previous build to be installed prior, leading to tons of file not found messages, but the build still installs correctly. After installing, you can choose from two graphics options by default, those being CGA and Hercules. I'm choosing CGA for this video because it's the option that was chosen by default. As we run MSWin to start up the system, we're greeted with the MS-DOS executive, open to the C Windows test directory, which has everything from source code to applications to drivers. Some features in this build include a demo for showcasing fonts, the ability to open applications as icons by holding shift while opening them, sample chart and graph applications, and can, can you, you believe, believe it, it? Reversing. reversing. All in all, this build isn't very stable. For example, Notepad doesn't even work without modifying config.sys at the root of the C drive, which in my case doesn't exist, and ppdemo.exe opens, but because of two bytes that were added to the application stack pointer, it ruins the system's internal states. Next is the Alpha release, which was compiled on the 31st of January, 1985. The setup for this build is pretty similar to that of the last build, although the installer is now called WinInst as opposed to Install, and after files are done copying, a more graphical stage of setup starts, which installs graphics drivers and creates win100.exe, which contains core system components and drivers. EGA is now a supported graphics card, so I'll be using that for the sake of convenience. This build introduces Fastboot, which eliminates the need to load kernel.exe in startup, and a redesigned Windows API. Alongside that, there are several new applications, including Cube, Map Modes, Track, PIF, Font Test, Hello, Type, and Shapes. And hey, Notepad works now! Paint was seemingly deleted from the second disk for unknown reasons, although using undelete and MS-DOS 6, you can get it back. The control panel has been updated, now showing the date and time. This build also supports overlapping windows, but only if you modify programs so that it could do so. Moving on to the beta release, compiled on the 8th of May 1985, we're greeted with a setup closer to that of the final build. This build doesn't automatically create the C Windows folder, so you'll have to create it yourself before starting setup. Once setup asks you to install printers, press Shift and Q, the Q being a capital. This build introduces a boot screen for the very first time, showing the Microsoft logo, the name of the build, and some copyright information. Once we get to the desktop, we can see that most of the user interface has been redesigned, now looking closer to that of the final build. This build is also the first to support color out of the box. Some new applications in this build include Boxes, Card File, Calendar, and Palette, Card File and Calendar eventually making it into the final build. That's pretty much it for major changes in this build. On the 30th of July, we would see the Premiere Edition, 
which is pretty similar to the last build, except for the fact that most of the sample applications were removed. This build was compiled simply to prove that Windows would actually come out, and that it wasn't just vaporware. This is where we get to the final release of Windows 1.01, .01, being released on November 20th, 1985. Changes from the Premiere Edition include a completely rewritten memory management system, and a default color scheme. This release would go down in history as the first ever release of Windows, and would officially end support on the 31st of December, 2001.